it's time to build something. It's been so long since we've done a thing, and uh, well, I finally entered the world of the TPG. This is the test pattern generator. This is version two, and I know what you're thinking. How do I not have one of these? Well, if you guys know me by now, I'm cheap. That's why I don't have one by now. But I finally got one because I've got a whole bunch of monitors to test. So I figured, yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and get one of these. So this is, again, this is version two. So it's a little bit smaller than the original. But I have a lot of monitors to test. So what we're going to do is build ourselves a monitor test bench, so to speak. So what I'm going to do is on this panel here, and I've already cut out the wood and put a hole here for a switch. We're basically going to put a switch and we're going to put an isolation transformer and an AC line filter and a terminal block and then some wires going out that will go to power the monitor. And then with that terminal block, we're actually gonna leave a spot for ourselves to add a switching power supply so we can turn this into another test bench. I know I've made a test bench before, but now it's using some old arcade parts. We're actually gonna build one from scratch. So I'll go over the parts that we have here. So as far as parts go, we're going to probably start with our AC inlet. You can pick these up off of Amazon for probably about, I don't know, seven bucks or less. This one's even wired for us too. Um, this is just a matter of convenience, but you don't need to buy them wired. You can, if you buy more of them, they're even cheaper, but I think mine came in a two pack for, I don't know, seven bucks. You will need a power cord. This just uses the standard you know, computer power cord for your AC inlet there. That's the easiest way to describe it. We're also, also going to need an isolation transformer now. They sell the, you know, the 110, 120 volt and the 100 volt isolation transformers that you can get out there. It's still wrapped in the foam. I got this from Arcade Parts Repair and it was probably, I don't know, I can't remember, 35 bucks. We're gonna need some Molex connectors, an AC line filter, which I picked up off of eBay years ago. So we're gonna use that, that was probably uh, I don't know, a few bucks a piece. And then I've got a terminal block here, and that's just so that I can add the power supply later. I won't be using it right away, but it will be there. We've got some wire that we're gonna need to use for our AC to the monitor. Um, I happen to have black and red, but I probably wouldn't use black and red, honestly. Maybe black and white, or any other color except for red. Red to me is five volts, but it does match this. I mean, geez, they're even using uh, the wrong color for ground, in my opinion. Ground, um, I think, what do they not match? The ground, they made yellow. Um, ground should not be yellow to me. Ground should be green, but uh, it's already wired, so so be it. Especially since we're already using yellow here. I don't like that color combination, so I was just changing the colors, but being as I'm cheap and we've already paid for that, we're not gonna waste the wire. Um, you're gonna need some other connectors or, as well. You can pick up a, an assortment like this at Harbor Freight, pretty cheap, or any other place that sells that stuff. We'll, I don't even know which one we're gonna need yet, but we'll need some. And you're gonna need some, some wood screws as well. And this is just a scrap piece of wood. I had some scrap MDF lying around. And basically what we did, this is about Oh, about 10 inches or so long and maybe four inches high and it's just enough to fit then i just took a scrap piece and cut this off and cut a hole out here for the ac inlet that's pretty much it i wasn't really measuring to anything specific it was just to use some scrap wood that i had lying around make your size to fit and uh i guess now we should go ahead and to get started we'll figure this out as we go right so let's go ahead and take a look at our power switch here again this is just our standard ac inlet remember the circle means off this one actually has a fuse in it i believe i checked this i think this is like a 10 amp fuse but that may be a bit high for what we're doing but we can always add another fuse in in line plus the monitor chassis have a fuse and then if I do add a power switching power supply coming out the five volts I will put in another fuse block with probably a you know three amp I would say maybe two and a half 
slow blow fuse in um, that way if anything on the on a board goes and we're actually testing boards we'll be good but anyway so we've got these wires here uh, if we look at the back just to show you how this works here uh, so this is where our ac comes in and we have a bunch of wires here they're kind of a mess um, all right so we have our yellow which is our ground and that will go to our AC line filter. We have this black loop here. This is kind of connecting that part of the switch. We also have a red loop here. And then we have our black and red coming out. Okay. So these are the ones that will get wired to our AC line filter. And we'll double check to make sure which one is uh, our neutral and which ones are hot. I should probably go check that. I should probably look it on here and see if I can see that first. Let's check that. So I did my research and I, I figured it out, which is important. So our switch is going to be installed this way here. And the right side of this plug is our hot or our load. And that's important to remember because that will be going to our red wire coming out of it. Now, just to be sure, certain, I did grab an AC you know, computer power cord that I've got, and I checked it, and let's see if we can actually, we can actually see this. I doubt it. Will we focus? Mm, well, just pretend you believe me. So if you can see it, which you probably can't, We've got the neutral here and the load here, and it goes in. So this is the load, remember, and it goes in that way. So we'll end up on the right. It's actually marked with an L here and an E for earth ground, all things which we probably cannot see on the camera. Maybe. Man, it does not want to focus. Anyway, yeah. So load on this side and that's how it goes in and that makes sense with our plug all right moving on so now we're just going to kind of dry fit everything we're going to put our plug in through here pull our wires through and so that's going to go like this and so that on this side we got a nice plug here and we can add more buttons to this panel if we want I don't know what we'd add, but we could add buttons. Buttons are cool. All right, so we got that. And then, and then it's going to go to our AC line filter. Our AC line filter goes in this direction. It's actually labeled for us as well. Maybe. All right, there we go. There's the labeling of it. You can see that it has the load side, which is going to go to our isolation transformer, and then our line side, which is going to go to the you know, AC inlet there. So let's go ahead and put that in. So that's going to go over here somewhere like this. And then we've got our a big block of a isolation transformer. This is actually pretty small considering this is from the arcadepartsandrepair.com. You can find these on eBay. There we go. Here we go. And this is the 120 volt one. This is the one that you would use for uh, most computer monitors. I mean, not com computer monitors. Come on, Tim. Arcade monitors. That's what we're working with here. All right, so that's going to go, and we've got uh, input is the red side, and the output is the yellow side. So the yellow side here is going to go to our monitor. So we kind of have to orientate this in such a way. So something like, so like this, like this, over here. we got to kind of think about, all right, if we put a power supply in, where would it go? Would it go over here? Would it go over here? Well, so we'll think about that for a second and figure out what works best. 
Um, and then, so let's just kind of put this, we'll put it here for now. And we've got a terminal block. So the reason I'm using the terminal block is so that if I do decide to add a power supply, I can do so very easily. So we're gonna, this is just a, a two pole terminal block. Um, and you know, it was this thing that I got off the interwebs. You can buy a bunch of them cheap or spend a lot of money on one. I think it was like five or six bucks for one, but if you buy them in bulk, you probably get them at closer to a, a dollar, dollar and a quarter a piece. But then I'd have extras and I wouldn't know what to do with it. All right, so this is going to be our terminal block. So, our, so not a, yeah, so we're going to, maybe we put that in between here so that if we do decide to put a power supply in, we can easily mount that. Maybe we go, and we go like this, and that way, well, we wanna make sure that we have easy access to these wires so that they don't get tangled in anything if they're going to the arcade monitor. So we have gotta have something like this, some wires in between, and this is basically, I can, you know, just tap into this side for the AC. So basically what's going to happen, power comes in over on this side. It's going to go through the line filter. It's going to come out. It's going to go to the terminal block. The wires will go to the terminal block, and then they will connect to the isolation transformer. And then essentially we're done, because then we can just mount this to make it a wire to go to the monitor. We also want to make sure that we can put our power supply in here as well. Let's see how, you know, you know what? You got to carry this thing around. So is it better like this? No, no. If it over here, it's like awkward to carry, but like this is easier. See, these are the important things you think about. And that leaves me room for the power supply here. I should get a power supply. Maybe I have one lying around. We'll get a power supply and test it out. So I found a power supply, it's in a box. So it's not used, it's just one I've got sitting on the shelf for the day I need one. So the box is pretty close to the actual size, so there it could go like this. And then we would just have our AC wire going in a certain direction. The other option is to go like this, or, you know, like this, meaning all right, why am I flipping around? I'm flipping it around because if we open the box, we have to think about where our wires are going to be and where they're going to go, and you want access to the five volt adjustment. So obviously, our wires probably will be on this going out because the otherwise that would be where our JAMA connector or whatever goes. Hmm, I like this better because I can actually push that right up against the edge. How's this? No, it's not bad. How is it like this as far as holding and carrying? Ah, that's better. Honestly. And then we can everything come out right here. All on the same side. That's not bad. That's not a bad idea. I think I like it like this. Well, Leave your comments below on what you would have done. I'm sure you would have done it differently or had a better way to do it, but, you know, that's fine. I value your opinion. All right, let's go ahead and uh, see what we can make of this. I'm not going to put this power supply in, though. I'm saving it. Uh, maybe I got another junk one I can put in. To get things started, I'm just going to screw in the AC lint. We're going to use some little wood screws here. And hope that this MDF doesn't hate us and split. Probably will. Maybe it won't. I'm not pre-drilling anything. Forget it. Let's just drill it in. There we go. Good enough. Yeah, and this is meant to be quick and easy. We're not going to spend a lot of time doing this. You may spend more time cutting the wood.
All right, there we go. Couple more. There we go. All right, good enough. That will work. And now we need to put in our AC line filter. So I guess, you know, well, all right, so we got the AC line filter. I'm probably gonna wire this to the AC line filter first. Well, no, because these wires are real long. I don't need them to be this long. So we're gonna cut and put on some quick disconnects. I got some, some Bob Roberts quick disconnects here that we will put on and uh, go from there. See these are the right size is the 0.25s. I think it's the 0.25s. They fit, yep, good enough. All right, great. So we'll put those on. And, you know, let's try this here. This is like the thinking out loud process that most people find boring. Yourself probably included. So if we go over here with it, I could put it like right there. Yeah, I don't like the way it bends the wires though. So we'll keep it close. Okay. And then this can go here. No, this is going over here. And the terminal blocks in here. All right. Yeah, that's real short though. You know what I wish? I wish the yeah, the power supplies. Well, that does make sense. Never mind. I say I wish the power supplies put the AC on the back, the switching ones. But you know, you need everything on the front because that's how you're changing them out of the arcade machine. That makes more sense. But we will go like this and loop around. We'll be fine. We'll make room. I just don't like to stress out the wires, but I think we'll be okay. All right, let's cut, strip, put some connectors on. You guys know how to do that. I'm not going to film that. Or will I? Who knows? So I think I'm going to put the line filter about here. So I'll move it a little bit further in if I need to, but I'm going to cut my wires to length as if it were about here. So... Yellow is our ground. We're just going to go ahead and we'll cut that. Save your scrap wire. You never know when you're going to need it. Throw it in your tool bag. There we go. That's about there. Maybe. Gosh, I need to do snips. These are all chewed up. All right. Well, then we must strip these and put on the connector. So if you've never stripped wires before, which I'm assuming that if you're making one of these, you probably have by now. But you never know. You want to leave about, you know, enough <laughs> to go into your connector of choice. And you don't want any bare wire exposed. So it depends on the connector you're using. It could be anywhere between like an eighth of an inch to maybe a quarter of an inch, depending on your connector. And then I like to twist these a little bit. Helps them slide on the connector easier. And we put our connectors on. So I'm gonna use these quarter inch insulated quick disconnects. And these are the female versions 
that slide on these spades. So that's what we're going to be using. You just crimp them on, which is great. You don't need a special crimping tool. Any crimping tool from you know your automotive parts store will work. You just put them on and then go ahead and crimp away, squeeze it tight. And that should do it. Give the old tug test to make sure it doesn't come out and go ahead and do the rest. So now we just gotta plug everything in. We said yellow was our ground. So we're gonna plug that into the middle one, which is our ground. And then remember coming in on this side, red on our right coming in. So that'll be our left on the camera side. Well, this red wire here, that's our load. And we're going to keep it consistent going through all the way. So we'll put that here on our right. And then the black will go on our left. And we're good. And then we can kind of figure out where we want this. We can put a little bit of a bend in it. And then we'll screw this in. I think there's pretty good. Do you? Sure. Why not? We'll go ahead and screw that in. We got a little bit of slack. Right? Sure. Just a little bit. I can't really go much further than that anyway. All right, let's get some screws, get the drill. Call it a day. Now, something to keep in mind for when you're grounding everything, you will be using the outer casing here as far as grounds so you're running all the ground wires you run you're going to run a ground wire it will go from the metal here to the metal here and that's a nice easy quick direction and we'll just undo a screw when it comes time to do that if we even show that let's move this a little bit closer How's that? Sure. Okay. And we'll do the other one. Uh-oh. It broke? My screw broke? Did the other side break? No. How'd that happen? That's ridiculous. It broke. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is it because it's MDF and not wood? Do I really need to pre-drill everything? Oh my goodness. Ridiculous. Oh, I think this one broke too. Oh, it's spinning. It did break. No way. That's wild. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to go there and have extra holes. Do I really need to pre-drill? Oh, I guess I did my... Well, you know what? Let's just do it again for fun. We went nice and slow. That's wild. Two screws. Like it didn't go, no, it's not going through. They're too short. Oh my gosh. Can't make this stuff up.
I think it's because it's the MDF. It's so dense. All right, there we go. Wild. Look at that. Two broken screws. I'm guessing it's because it's the MDF. Okay, sure enough. All right. Anyway, that's in place. Our wires are here. We're good to go. Keep that in mind for the rest of these. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to come out. We got to... I gotta get some short wires here. We're gonna keep our colors exactly the same as we move through here just to keep everything consistent. Um, and then let's go ahead and we're gonna make some short connections. I gotta look for some some rings or something to attach to this. Let me look for that. I need connectors. So I've taken the two screws out of the terminal block. Remember how we cut that extra wire off? Well, let's just uh, reuse it instead of cutting some off of our spool. Although the stuff off of our spool, I think, might be a little bit nicer, at least a little bit more flexible. That's yeah, fine. Um, waste not, want not. One of these ends is already stripped. They kind of pre-strip it for you. You can just pull that off, which is nice. We'll uh, take advantage of that. And we'll twist the end. And I've also got some other ring terminal connectors here that fit in here nicely with the screw, and we'll use those. Those I'm not worried about them coming off at any point in time, and that will work just fine. I don't like to use these, though, on the power supplies because it's a pain in the neck to get them on and off. But these ones aren't, they're not planning on coming undone. Not like a power supply. So we'll use those. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, oh, I don't know, let's see which sides do I need more on? I think I need more on, on these, so we'll put that in. These may be a little bit long. I think that's stripped out too much, too long, but that's fine. It will be fine. Okay, go ahead and put this on. Tug test, we're good. Let's go ahead and do the other one. I like when they're already pre-stripped for you like that. Super convenient. Well, less one, less thing to do. It doesn't even matter. All right. There we go. So now we have one side that will go in here, like that, and the other side will continue in here. Just like that, and we got, then we'll go over to the terminal block, and I don't need it to be very long. We're going to make it, well, let's see, if we make it, like this long, and we move it. That might be a little too long. That might work though. That that might be okay. We'll find a happy medium. So we really don't need the whole length. And worst case scenario is it's all the way out here, and it's not going to be. So we'll cut them both just about the same. She'll make the black one just a little bit longer because it will have a slightly further to go. Maybe that's enough. Another half an inch. Oop, that wire went flying. All right, let's go ahead and strip this. Twist those and we can, we can take this off. This doesn't even need to be on here for right now. If it wants to come off, geez. I think it's going to stay on. There we 
we go. There's one. And two coming up. See, this isn't that bad. You could have done this faster than I could have because you're like, I don't have to film it. Good. And then we just got to screw these in. So let's screw these in first. And then we'll figure out where it goes. Oh, it's magnetic. It's never magnetic when I need it to be. And basically this terminal block here, just as a refresher, is to allow us to connect the power supply at another point in time. Because if I wasn't worried about doing that, I would just take the isolation transformer and go straight to the line filter. All right. Then we can take this and we'll put it, I don't know. Somewhere over here like this. And screw it in. Right? Maybe break another screw. Who knows? Is that good? Is that a good location? Sure, that works. And these wires will come down here. All right. Good enough. Okay, there's one screw. We're just gonna put two in. This thing could take four screws, but we don't need four. Two will definitely do the job. Good enough. Look at that, we're getting there. Uh, I also need to make sure my isolation transformer is going the right way. I've got yellow is the output. So we actually need to turn this. <laughs> Whoops. And make sure that the red wires are going over here. That would have been a fun mistake. It's wired backwards. All right. So there we go. We will keep that like that. Um, even shorter distance to go and will actually match up a little bit better. Um, I do need to make sure that I can get my drill in on the other side of the transformer here. Oh, I need, I'll need to put an extension on there. We'll put it where we want. All right, that's good. All right, so red goes in and we only need a little bit. So we'll give ourselves a little bit of slack. All right, save our scraps. Strip the wire, 
etc etc find connectors let's go find connectors first I'm gonna use the red connectors this time because the actual stranded wire portion of this is not as thick so we want to use the right one the insulation is thick because the wire is itself a little bit thinner All right, get our scraps out of there. And let's go ahead and put these on. Oh no. That didn't work. That one's a bust. You broke. What the heck? What's up with these? These red ones aren't working. Back to the blue ones. That was weird. Both red connectors just broke when I crimped them. <sighs> they are Harbor Freight parts, so, I mean, expect it. I'm glad it wasn't the last two connectors I had, because... That would have been a problem. All right, let's go ahead and put the screws back in. We're just going to keep matching things up. So the wire that's on the right will go to the terminal on the right. And the terminal on the left will go to the one, you know, on the left. All right, good. That's exactly what we want. Red is in, yellow is out. And now we just need to put that in. Let's get some screws. Gonna probably need all four screws for this. So uh, that was stupid. I've got this mounted in here, but as you can see, there's many other holes um, because yeah, even though I took the time and pre-drilled the holes for the screws, man, they all broke. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I have so many broken screw heads here. And I, and I pre-drilled it. So I pre-drilled it, and then I actually did the next size up, which uh, I still broke a screw or two on. So uh, don't use wood screws with MDF unless you are pre-drilling or at least not those ones. I mean, I even took it nice and easy. I even broke one by hand with a hand screwdriver, not even a drill. I don't know. Anyway, so as we look at this, this is actually, for all intents and purposes, like 95% done. 
we just need to put a connector on the end of this to go to a monitor. Now I am going to extend those leads and put the female Molex connector on it. But that's it. This is done. This is now an arcade monitor test bench when we put it in combination with the TPG because really for an arcade monitor, what you need is an isolation transformer. This can easily get turned into a test bench because we have an AC, a tap here, and we can put a power supply, a switching power supply there. There's room for it. I'm not going to do it today. Maybe we'll come back and visit this project again, but let's go ahead and put those Molex connectors on now. So go ahead and solder your wires together or use butt connectors or wire nuts or something, just something so you can make your Leads coming off the isolation transformer a little bit longer. I did about uh, two feet worth. I think that should be plenty. And then we're just gonna go ahead and wrap this up by putting some heat shrink tubing over everything. And then we'll put our Molex connector on the end and we're good, right? Where's the middle? There's the middle. Something like that. There we go, there's that one. Shrink, shrink. There we go. There we go, and I soldered them together. I think that's the way I wanted to do it. And then did the tug test and we're good. All right, now it's time for the Molex pins female pins on this because the monitor always has the male side. At least let me double check monitor chassis. I think that's what it's going to be. Next, you're going to need some 093 Molex connectors. You're going to need the female side because I did double check. It is the male side on most monitor chassis. And you also want to use the connector, the plastic connector that is used most commonly for yours. Now, don't turn this thing on with these just hanging out free. You're going to want to put them into a housing. Otherwise, you're going to shock yourself or blow a fuse or short something out or have an overall bad time. But anyway, we've got our our female connectors there. Let's go ahead and we'll strip off the ends. Remember with these connectors, you don't need to take off much. It's like an eighth of an inch. And that's really all you need for those pins to grab. We'll do the next one. And then we'll go ahead and put our connector on. So they sit in here like this. You want to make sure that the metal inside one connects to that connector. Although that's going to be hard to see. But we'll get it in. And I've gone over how to do these connectors before. go there's that and then you do the a side for the insulation we're good next Just about done. There we go. 
So there we go, we have two female ends. Now all we would do is just plug these in to our monitor chassis and with you know a tube and etc. and everything should power up. We don't have to have it plugged into the arcade game every now and then to, you know, and run the wire everywhere. So this is this is it. We did it. Let me go see if I've got a connector just to throw on this so I don't electrocute myself. <laughs> But yeah, we did it. So let's kind of recap what we've got here. Let me get my stuff out of the way. Uh, first things first, we broke a ton of screws because uh, MDF sucks. Don't use MDF. Uh, first of all, if it sees a drop of moisture, it's going to be twice its size. The other thing is um, you want to pre-drill for this MDF because uh, MDF sucks. Beyond the MDF, after using a regular piece of scrap wood, we've got our AC inlet. Our AC comes into our line filter. Our line filter then wraps around to this terminal block here. This terminal block we put here so that we could tap into the power here for using a switching power supply or another power supply. And then we can run and test game boards and then also have it test a monitor. This was primarily designed to do just test monitors in conjunction with the TPG, which I have now joined the TPG party. I can't wait to see what that party's like. But yeah, let's uh, let's put a connector on here and see what happens. Maybe it'll work. I don't have a monitor nearby, so yeah. Let's just put a connector on. But if you do, hold on, let's pause for a second. If you do put a connector in, you need a depinning tool. Why do you need a depinning tool? Because I guarantee you, you're going to come across some monitor that's got a different connector than what you have here. So just keep that in mind. You will need to depin your monitor every now and then to make this, or depin one one side to make this work properly. Otherwise, you're going to have the wrong connector. You're going to need an O93 Molex depinning tool. Back in the day at Radio Shack, they were 10 to 12 bucks. I don't know what they cost now. So I went and harvested a Molex connector off the old test bench, and I had actually labeled it with 120 volts. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to use it, and what do I mean by depinning? You'll need a tool like this. This is your depinning tool, and you just kind of shove it in the hole. It goes around, maybe. It goes around the old pins that are in there. You might hear a click, and then you can just, maybe, it should just pop out. Bam, there it goes. That was like Emerald. I used to live in the same town as Emerald at one point in time, although not at the same time. There we go, popped right out. But you're going to need that tool because if you put this connector on and let's say your monitor has a different connector, you know, you might need a different one. So we're going to go ahead and put these in here. And now we have, we are safe. We can turn this thing on. We're not worried about things happening. And there we go. Um, the other thing to, if you don't have a ton of different Molex connectors and want to deal with that. I actually carry this in my tool bag. And what is this? This is, it's just wire with some Molex pins on it. It has a female on one side and male on the other side. And I use it exactly for testing things, testing a monitor outside of a cabinet and I need more slack. So I can plug this in to the connector like this and what it does is it allows me to extend the cable and then since because it's a female on the other side it always matches up I don't have to worry about the connector I do need to make sure that obviously I'm not touching anything metal with these or shorting it out because that is 120 AC volts going through there but this is a definitely a handy thing to keep in your tool bag all it is is just Molex connectors Molex pins with no connector housing on either side. Anyway, there we go. We did it. We finished. I'm going to put some zip ties around things so that things stay nice and neat and maybe 
you know, like a, a clip up here just so that, you know, I don't accidentally pull too hard on this and rip it out of the isolation transformer. But I don't see that happening. But yeah, that's it. We did it. Broke a ton of screws and made ourselves a little monitor test bench to go with our TPG. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and hopefully sometime soon I can test this out. If you've got any questions, please feel free to let me know. All right, we're back. Yeah, I know I ended the video, but we weren't really done. We had to test this thing out, right? So here I am. We've got this on a piece of cardboard on the floor because, you know, in reality, this is where tests happen. The majority of the time we've got our AC power cord here. This is like the computer power cord, a computer style power cord going to our AC inlet. And just a reminder that this AC inlet actually has a fuse built into it. It comes with a 10 amp fuse. You probably want to lower that down to about a two or three amp fuse. And ideally what you'd probably want to do is put a circuit breaker in, in line instead after that AC line filter just because that would be the better way to do things. Uh, that way, if you're blowing monitors up, uh, you, at least you can reset the circuit breaker, right? We have the TPG version two. This is the mini one, and it fits nicely on there. We've got everything connected to a Wells Gardner 4900, and we'll just go ahead and power it on real quick, but I'll just show you where we've got everything plugged in. So we've got our AC coming in. And this is actually the Sega style connector that was used on like Outrun and Enduro Racer. And I ideally, this might be going into the Enduro Racer project that we have here at some point. And the other thing I was using earlier today was this little, um, you know, kind of the adapter I made to just go in between when you don't have the right connector. So I was testing a few other monitors out and this style connector that I put on here is more of the Sega style. And I'll probably pop that off and put a different one on to make it more useful, but I did need to use this and it was very handy. This is the one with the, the female pins on one side and the male pins on the other, the Molex 093, and it just goes right in between everything. It works out real well. We've got the TBG plugged in in there. That's this wire right here. And let's go ahead and turn it on and see if this monitor does indeed work. So we'll go ahead and turn on our test bench. It's got a light so you know it's on. Then we'll go ahead and turn on our TPG. And I, I think I heard the monitor come on. There it is. It's showing up. There is a sign of life. And the new TPG actually has a, a battery meter. That's what that green bar is there. So that's that's nice and handy. Um, I've used the older TPGs, and they do have this has some different menus with it as well. So we'll kind of cycle through this real quick. There's the dip switch settings here for the standard and medium res, and you can also toggle them for different you know the different guns if you want to turn on a different gun. I think. Turns on and off the guns, red gun. Yeah, isn't that fun? All right, we'll go ahead and push this button in here. And this button in here will change the modes. And that way you can kind of see what's going on here. I think I've got a nice degauss issue in that corner over there. I hope that it's a degauss issue. But We've got the magic wand to uh, to fix that. You can actually see the outrun burn in there. Can you guys see the outrun burn? I can see the outrun burn. It's easy to see, easier to see on that screen than the all white. But there are the different patterns that you can use to adjust your monitor. And there's some of these new ones. They're pretty psychedelic. My friend Rob would love this. He probably should get it just for these patterns alone. Here's another one. I don't even, I should look up why this one is here and why it's on the, the left side like this. I don't really know what it's showing. I wish I knew, or is it just a pattern? And then this is like rug pattern that changes colors. It's kind of fun to watch. 
This reminds me of Zombies Ate My Neighbors. And then this is the one of the falling block patterns. They had this on the original TPG. All the other ones you, well, some of the other moving ones you saw were the newer version. And we're back. So there you go. All the different test patterns to help you adjust things. The ones I use the most are the color bars. Uh, I use this one quite a bit. Um, let's see. I use bright white and the grayscale one. That way you can kind of see if you've got too much red or green or something. I don't. You haven't used this one. This is a newer pattern. That's a newer pattern. I'll use this one a lot for convergence. Um, you want to make sure that when you are looking really close, all the dots are white. And sometimes if you get real close, you can see that the red and the green dots start to separate. And then you'll want to adjust your convergence. I can even see, you know, up on the top right hand corner that things are adjusting, changing a little bit. But I don't know if I'm going to fuss with that. And these are all the new ones that are fun, but I'm not sure. I use this one sometimes. But yeah, checkers. You can use this one to see if you've got too much uh, bleed and need to adjust your cutoff or your con. Sometimes this will even show if you're adjusting your contrast too high, it'll start to show another color bleeding off the edge. There you go. That's what I like to use. And if you shut it off and turn it back on again, we'll go right back to. Ooh. Didn't like that. Let's let it reset completely. Ah. Come back, come back. Well, we'll fuss with that in a minute. But you can see how handy that can be. Oh, oh, there it is. I wonder if it's maybe these connectors. Nah, they're new. Well, we'll fuss with that anyway. It's good to test, put it through its paces, move wires around, and see how things go. But if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. I am no monitor guru by any means, so really don't ask me any hard questions. I'd appreciate it. And uh, thanks again for watching. Hopefully you found this useful and helpful and uh, can make your life easier. Thanks a lot. Thanks again for watching.